Hey, what's up guys? So I've got kind of a cool video for you here where we're going to talk all about electronic paper displays. So you know I've been on this quest for a long time on all things low power and developed the trig board here, which is an ESP8266 Wi-Fi board that sleeps at less than one microamp, wakes up automatically once an hour or based on a digital input. So it's perfect for this little project here that just shows my YouTube channel stats. I'm using the onboard timer here to wake up once an hour, connect to the Wi-Fi network, pull down those stats from the YouTube API, update the display, and go back to sleep again at one less than one microamp. So that is why electronic paper is the perfect technology for this sort of project because any other type of display is going to have that constant standby power to keep it uh, up and running. Whereas with electronic paper, we can actually disconnect power completely to it and it will retain that image. And it's also super thin, so very cool display. And I also have one here in color. So um, in this video, we're gonna talk all about electronic paper and how to work with these from an ESP8266 so again, you know, I'm using all my custom hardware here, but really you can use any Node MCU or ESP8266 uh, breakout board. And we'll, we'll get into some of the other things that, that you might need here. But all of this stuff is either off the shelf you can buy or I've made these boards available. So again, in this video, we're going to just talk about the basics here. So how to get text on the display and how to load images on the display. And I think based on some of my other videos, we've already talked about how to get connected to the internet. Uh, and maybe in future videos, we'll talk more about different APIs because the possibilities really are endless for what you might want to display here. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So let me first just walk through some of the hardware here that I'm using. Uh, I've got the 7.5 inch black and white panel here from Waveshare. But of course, you can use the one that has the e-paper hat because all I did was, let's go to the, the wiki for that. All I did was take this board here and they've open sourced it. So I took that design, miniaturized it and matched up the IO perfectly to the trig board. So now you've got a real nice connect, straight connection to the display from the trig board. So it really doesn't matter what you use. And again, you can use that, that board, you can use trig board, you can use node MCUs, doesn't all matter at all. It's all just an ESP8266. So anyway, um, getting into it here, I'm just gonna quickly show you the connections here. So you've got the wave share panel connected right here. And then down here is where you make your connections over to the ESP8266 board. Um, and just quickly, I'm going to show you here. This is the library that I'm using. This is from ZingJM, the GX EPD library. So just download that zip and install it into the, the Arduino IDE. And um, I did have to make some modifications to this because once you start getting a, a lot of code going in your project, like you know, you've got several other libraries you're connecting up to the internet, um, I was having some crashes, so I had to optimize this slightly. So I am going to keep an archive of the library that I'm using down here. So in case you ever have issues with anything, uh, I'll have my version down here, which is just a couple minor tweaks to it. That's all. So um, anyway, uh, let's jump now over to the code, and uh, this will help explain some of those other connections. So we've got this, this code, and this is just dead simple, and I wanted to make something that was very simple to start with, a small baby step, like let's just get some basic text up on the display and show an image, and then from there you can build it out to whatever you want. Okay, so we've got all of the includes here, and then down here is where you actually configure the display. So we're going to use the native spy port on the ESP8266, so if we go over here to the trig board, this is kind of easy to see. Go to that wiki page. You see right here, I've broken out the spy port, the native pins used for the spy port. So we've got GPIO 14 for clock and then GPIO 13 for MOSI because we're not getting any data back from the display. So GPIO 12 can be used for other things. So we've got 14 for clock, 13 for MOSI 
And if you go here, you'll see that. So we've got clock, so that's the, the spy clock. DN is that Mossy GPIO 13. And then we've got one, two, three, four pins we need uh, to set up there. So if we go back to the code, you see 16 is for chip select, four is for DC, reset on five, and then right here, 12 is for busy. So like I said, we needed 12 anyway, so we actually used 12, GPIO 12, for that busy line that I already showed you, four and five there for the, um, I gotta go back to the code, four and five there for DC and reset. I don't have 16 broken out on my trig board, so I had to actually kinda uh, play some games there with that design. So I'm gonna go back now to the e-paper display and I had to actually jump over on the bottom side of the board to pin four, which is GPIO 16. So that's where that pin connects down to the e-paper display, okay? So anyway, those are the connections. Then of course you've got ground and 3.3 volts going over to it. And then this board here takes that 3.3 and sets up the other power supplies for the display. Um, and that's all you need. Now keep in mind though that this is a universal display board here. So you've got these switches here. So we're using for the 7.5 inch display, we're using um, the four line SPY and we're using B for other, which again, if I go over here, you'll see that I actually have it spelled out here with solder jumpers. So four wire would mean that JP3 is grounded. And then right here, the 0.47 resistor needs to be jumpered in through JP2, okay? And I'm gonna just quickly zoom in and show you what that looks like. So solder jumper to 0.47 and four line spy, which is exactly what they did here as well. Yeah, and their schematic, you've got J1 and J3. Those are the two switches. So just to show you that, you ground J1 to give you four line spy. And then you've got the position B there between one and two. Um, on J3 for the 7.5 inch display. Okay, so that is, I think, everything that discusses the, uh, the hardware connections and what I'm using here. And then in the code here, all I'm doing is actually um, just going over to this function here, update display. So we're gonna go over to that update display, which basically just initializes it and then we do the epaper.draw page. I mean, we have to do that just so that we update it um, in small chunks, okay? Which is, uh, uh, which so that we don't run out of memory and crash the ESP8266. Uh, you might be able to get away with doing it another way, but um, once again, once you start adding more code to this, you really gotta be careful with your memory usage. So in this though, for now, all we're gonna do is set the text color to black, that's our only choice right now, and then set our font, and then we're gonna set the cursor, and print hello world. And that's all we do for right now. So let's go ahead and upload this and see what happens. Okay, there you have it, hello world. And then you can see what I did down here was I just changed the font. <laughs> I actually forgot to put this in, there we go. So this is where we actually set the font and if you go back to here, you see all of the fonts that are, are available to us. So 24, 18, 12, and nine. So that is basically how you, you uh, set the font. So we start with the largest and then I'm gonna jump down to 18 and then let's upload this. Okay, and there you have it, it's updating the display, and you can see that we've changed that font. So that's all there is to writing text on the display. Very, very easy. Now, doing images is a little bit more tricky, so let's actually go ahead and try that out now. All right, so to display an image, we can go to the Waveshare Wiki, how to display an image and they kind of walk you through it. It's a little confusing and I think there might even be a problem somewhere in here. So I'll just walk you through this step by step. 
you will need this image to LCD utility. It only runs on Windows, so I've got my Windows box here running and we'll use that utility over there. So uh, first thing we need though is an image. So I just did a Google image search here for YouTube and I don't know what it would be cool to use. I saw something here. How about this gear? 246, mm, maybe this thing. 300 by 300 because the display is 640 by 384. We could of course resize it um, and that's that's easy enough to do but uh, 300 by 300 just kind of works so let's just go ahead and download that to downloads and we will have to convert that to um, a, a bitmap for the utility here. I believe that only takes in bitmaps. So let's go ahead and do that. And on a Mac, I'm going to use Toy Viewer. Okay, I've got this open in Toy Viewer, and then I will export as a bitmap. Go back over to the image to LCD utility, and we'll open that up. Okay, and there we have it. So it will automatically convert it to black and white for you. You can reverse the color on it so that everything that is black is actually white on it. So you can do a lot of different things. Um, I'm going to leave all of these things at their default um, configuration. I'm going to change this though to 640 by 384 because those are the dimensions of our display. And then all these other things I'll just leave unchecked and we can we can tweak it a little bit down here too if we wanted. You can see that in the contrast. But I think just leaving them in their default positions is good enough. Now, if you just went ahead and exported this out and loaded it, you might get so you might on the the uh, display it might be distorted or it might just come up as a black box. So what I usually do is click reload, okay? And that will reload it according to whatever parameters you had set over here. If you don't do that, I think it, for some reason it, it gets all confused and you get the distorted image. Okay, so we're done. All we have to do now is click save. So I saved that on my desktop and you get this here, this massive array. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take that whole thing, copy it, and paste it right in here. Now I've created another file in here called images.h. Now I'm just gonna paste that whole thing right in there, and I called that YouTube image. Now to save on your precious RAM, you're gonna wanna put this in the program memory so we do that by putting pre og mem, just like that. Okay, and that's all we need to do there. Now we can take that, go back to display, and then right here now, draw bitmap, and we'll draw that image, the GI image YouTube image, but we have to put in its, where we want it to be and its dimensions. So we're gonna want to set that to 300, oops, by 300. And then we gotta think about where we wanna put it, but how about for now, let's just put it at location zero, zero. And let's go ahead now and, well, we would want to probably erase the display first, and then let's go ahead and upload that, see how it works. Oh, I actually caught an, an, um, a mistake there. We needed these to be e-paper, not display one, which is what I had. Okay, and there it is, updating the display. And you can see now our image is there, but of course we also drew the uh, text right on top of it. But just as a quick test there, that looks pretty good. So now let's center that up and then put some text right underneath it. So we know that the width of this screen is um, 640. Just had to check that, 640. So if we took 640 divided by two, the center of the screen is at 320. And we know this image is at 
300. So we could just cut that in half at, and then it would be 150 on each side. So we could take the center of this, which was at 320, subtract 150 from that, and then that would be our X position if we wanted to perfectly center this up. So that would be the 320 minus 150 gives us 170. And then I might want to push that down slightly, so I'll push it down, even though it kind of already the image had some white space in it. So actually we could just leave that at zero. So I'll leave that at zero, but we do know it's 300. So then for the text we want to do, we'd have to push that way down to like 30, eh, let's do like 324, something like that. And then we can kind of push it over a little bit. And then, I don't know, put hello YouTube like that. And I'm gonna, yeah, let's see. About maybe, I'm thinking maybe 100. Okay, and then I'll get rid of this stuff right there. All right, so now let's go ahead and upload that. All right, so here it is updating. And there you have it. Okay, so that's all I really wanted to show you in this video is how you can do that. And um, I believe it or not, I actually struggled for quite a bit on that one thing within this tool, which was reload after you modify any of these settings. So um, it took me a long time to figure that out. But there you have it. Now you can load text on the display, put it anywhere you want images wherever you want. You can have multiple images, just keep adding them on in this file. So you would put another image down here and it would be the same kind of thing. And then from within this code, you can draw another bitmap below it and so on and so forth. So all pretty straightforward, easy. And then from that, from this example here, I think you can take it and now you can connect to whatever you want. Make a YouTube stats display like I did here. You can do a Bitcoin counter. You can use it as like a data portal for other sensors you've got, uh, like smart home sensors. I've got these trig boards all over my house. I think I might make a display that just shows the stat current status of all of them, what the pool temperature is, all the environmental data I've got. Um, so lots of cool stuff you can do with this, and I'll talk about that in future videos as well. But at least for now, you can take this and start working with these electronic paper displays. So I think that's everything I wanted to talk about in this video. Thanks for watching.